Today we're talking about three secret golf stats, three stats that are gonna change your game and help you start shooting lower scores tomorrow. I'm PGA Teaching Professional Todd Cope, Director of Instruction for US Golf TV and the Sanford Power Golf Academy. And as a golfer, I love numbers. I know you love numbers. That's what we like about golf. There's a score on the scorecard. It is what it is. We shot what we shot. And a lot of us want to play better golf. And so you're keeping track of some stats, but those stats are not telling the entire story. And today we're going to talk about specifically that. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel, all right? And be sure to leave a comment. What are the stats you're keeping track of? And do you want to know if I think that stat is of value? Put it in the comments, leave it there. I always answer everything as the best as I can and want to help you play better golf. And you might have something that you could teach me, maybe a stat that you're keeping that's not on the board. So let's dive right into it because we want to start helping you play better golf. So the most common one that we hear in terms of driving is people talk about how many fairways they hit. Well, I'm telling you right now, that's not of importance. What you should be looking at is what I like to call drives that are good enough. So I'm gonna write that down. Drives that are good enough. Now, why is that important or why is that different? Well, let me just, let's just think of a story here. Let's talk about an example. Golfer A plays around the golf and golfer A hits, let's say, 10 fairways, all right? Golfer B hits eight fairways. All right, but golfer A who hit 10 fairways hit two balls off the tee into the water. All right, golfer B only hit eight fairways, but out of those fairways that he missed, they all were drives that were what we call good enough. They weren't in a hazard, they weren't out of bounds, they were good enough. And what I mean by good enough is I mean they came to rest in a place where the golfer could advance the ball to where they needed to to continue on with the hole. So when you look at fairways hit, we're not calculating in the penalty how severe it is for missing a fairway. If one golfer misses the fairway and it's just in the rough by three or four yards and they can hit the ball in the green, heck, they might end up making a birdie. But the next golfer misses the fairway and it's in a hazard or it's out of bounds, those are not two equal equations. So when you start looking at your driving, don't look at how many fairways you hit. Look and ask yourself, how many of these drives were good enough that I could advance the ball to where I needed to? Now, as a general guide, I didn't plan on talking about this, but for a really good golfer, I want to see this good enough upwards around 90%. That would be really good. If you're shooting in the 80s, the 90s, something like that, maybe 70 or 80%, but 90 would be fantastic. All right, so that's tip number one. I'd be curious to see what you think about that, whether you like that or don't like that, that's okay. But what are some stats you're keeping track of to check out your driving? All right, next, short game. When we look at somebody's short game, what do they typically ask? Well, how many times did you get up and down? As I've said already, that is not telling the whole story. So I'm putting a nice big red X through that. What should you be looking at? Well, once again, I like to make my point by telling a story. So let's say that you miss a green and you chip the ball up there and you don't get the ball up and down, all right? Well, how do we know if the reason we didn't get it up and down was because of maybe poor putting or maybe was it a bad chip shot? How do we know what it is? And if I don't know what it is, then I don't know what to practice because it could be your putting, that's why you're not getting up and down or it could be your chipping. So how do you know? Well, here's the stat that you should be keeping track of. What I like to call the average distance after missed green and regulation. So basically what we're looking for is there, what is the distance that the ball comes to rest from the cup when you hit a chip shot? I missed the green, I hit a chip shot, What's the average distance? Now the goal, the gold standard for that is seven feet, all right? Because if your average chip shot finishes seven feet from the cup, one might have been 10, one might have been three, okay, but after you average them all, if it's around seven, eight feet, if you're not getting up and down, it's not because of your chipping, right? But if your average chip shot is, let's say, you know, 10, 15 feet from the cup, and you're not getting up and down, 
It's not because of your putting. It's because you're not a very good chipper. So don't look at how many times you get up and down. Dive deeper. Ask yourself, what's the average distance that my ball comes to rest after I miss a green regulation? And if that number is, as an average golfer, I'm going to say 10 feet or below, okay, it's probably not your chipping, it's putting. So hopefully that makes, makes sense. If you got any questions on that, all right, or that's a little too deep for you, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer those. All right, so let's keep, let's keep moving along. Ball striking. What do we look at when it comes to ball striking? All right, typically greens and regulation. Now this one here, I'm putting an X through that. Now, I'm not saying greens and regulation are not important. You should keep track of that also. I mean, I think that's an okay stat. But ask yourself this question. Ask yourself, I like to call, I'm gonna give you a little phrase here. We call it PhD. Did you get your PhD today? What I mean by that is pin high degree. So ask yourself how many shots, okay, iron shots, shots into the green that I hit, that I got the ball to basically pin high. Now it's not gonna be exactly pin high, but I'm talking three or four steps short a pin high, three or four steps lo uh, long a pin high. If the ball is finishing within that area, your ball striking is probably pretty good, okay? But if you're missing greens because they're way long or they're way short, all right, that's not a ball striking, that's a course management issue. You don't understand how far you're hitting the golf ball in general terms. So if you're not hitting greens in regulation, you need to look at a stat that's a little bit deeper. How often am I getting my PhD? How often is the ball pin high? Because that will really tell you the real story. So next time you head to the golf course and you're keeping track of your stats, here's what you're gonna do. When you get to the tee box, you're gonna ask yourself when the hole is done, when you finish to complete the full first hole, was that drive good enough? If it was, thumbs up, put a little check in the box, all right? If you miss a green in regulation, you're gonna ask yourself, how far was the chip shot? When I hit the chip shot, how far was that first putt? If it's 10 feet or less for an average golfer and you're not converting, okay, go work on your putting. If it's further than 10 feet from the cup, you gotta go work on your chipping. Ball striking, when you finish the hole, you're gonna ask yourself, did I hit the green regulation, but how close was I to pin high, all right? If you're long of the green or short of the green, that's not a ball striking issue. I mean, it could be if you're not hitting it solid, but more than likely, it could be a course management issue. So keeping track of stats, understanding where to look, simple tips like these, if you do this, they will immediately improve your game and start lowering your scores tomorrow.